Alors, euh, bonsoir à tout le monde et bienvenue. Je suis très, très heureuse d'être ici et d'avoir travaillé sur, euh, sur euh, cette exposition en explorant l'archive la, de Sandro. Et on est aussi très heureuse que Sandro est par nous. Il est venu euh, d'Italie pour euh, esprit pour euh, cette exposition. En effet, je vais faire mon euh, introduction en anglais pour euh, effectivement faciliter que Sandro il peut effectivement comprendre qu ce que je veux dire sur, euh, sur son travail. Donc, euh, mais après, si vous avez des questions pour moi, au Sandro, en euh, italien, ou en français, en anglais, ou autre langue, on pourrait vous aider. Um, so, it is... It is uh, July 1969, and uh, Apollo 11 has landed on the moon. The event was seen from, uh, uh, from everyone uh, all over the world, and it was the first global event show on television. So it was not just an event that captured the attention of the media and uh, of the world population, but also it was an event that forced a shift, at least for some architects in thinking about the kind of perspective uh, of a different idea of scale, a different idea of territory, and therefore also a different idea of society and architecture. At the beginning of the 70s, in fact, Sandro, touched by this um, event and that was kind of popular, popularized in the TV, wrote a letter to Adolfo Natalini, uh, one of the founders of Super Studio. So this letter that is, as, as Francesco said, we, we have in the archive, um, be, lay down the, a different idea of architecture that suddenly has to gain a new scale to the, to the discovery of this new expanded territory and therefore creating a possibility of an interplanetary architecture. But in the letter, uh, Sandro Pauli make two uh, important points. One that, uh, quoting, architecture can no longer be as we had thought, imagined, and constructed in our visions. From now on, the real image surpasses the fantasies or utopias which guided our creations. So somehow it states that, in fact, the way the super studio was working, projecting utopias and fantasies have been challenged by the, by the reality, and somehow the reality was, was more further advanced that that's what they were imagining and was more powerful than even the kind of utopias and fantasies that Super Studios imagined at that moment. The second point he made is that to design this, we will need the different media. No more pen and ink, pencil or photomontage, we will need the motion of the movie camera. So somehow the need to move from the drafting table to the kind of like uh, drawing, traditional drawing of architecture to the camera and therefore to uh, the moving image. Sandro has, has studied in architecture at university in Florence, and you can see some of his project before he, he also joined Super Studio or as part of Super Studio in the many main galleries uh, in, in this moment. And especially one that uh, is kind of striking that his design for, for a, a leisure park and a disco that was called Piper that he did under the still a school, as a school student in 66 for a, a class with uh, Professor Savioli that was called a new kind of space of involvement. He officially joined uh, Super Studio in 70 and till 72, even if he was a little bit, like these dates are a kind of official date, but uh, somehow, and this is a, a kind of portrait that uh, artist Adam George made of of after the official portrait of uh, that architectural design did in 71. And, and Sandro is this guy here, who has this uh, funny helmet that somehow captures his uh, interest and obsession for a kind of extra territorial ideas of architecture. So as you might know, Super Studio was founded in 66, followed by Adolfo Natalini and Cristiano Toraldo di Francia, and uh, in 66, where there was the flood in Florence in the December, and they kind of have to, they took the, the opportunity to rethink um, architecture, and therefore they started this kind of super architecture um, um, studio and, and, and idea. The other members joined later with Roberto Magris in 67, Frassinelli in 68, Alberto Magris in 70, uh, with uh, also Sandro Poli. 
So you can visit, as I saw, the, the show to Pure Radicali to understand the context of, of, of Super Studio and also with the other groups as Archizum, UFO, Ziggurat, and Gianni Patton and Gruppo 999 who gave voice at this, what uh, the historian, Italian uh, historian uh, Germano Celan defined in 71 as Architettura Radicale. So all their ideas were provoking and forward-looking, but somehow the radicality that uh, they have was, uh, that all this group had, was not to um, have a kind of antagonistic approach to reality, but rather aim to bring to a kind of extreme the logic of architecture, urbanism, and planning. So they had to build a kind of new uh, scenario for the future to do that, and, and, and this is where a kind of strong narrative character of the architecture of Super Studio and for sure of, of Sandro works comes in. So this means a, a kind of radical change in the basic tool of, our, of an architect. So from, as I said, from the traditional drawing of architecture, this gets substituted with a much more complex drawing that is the storyboard where in one drawing, he's able to connect narrative and design in one single view. So there are several notes and annotations in, 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 in Poly archive here at the CCA that um, claim again the need of, of new tools and the need of a, a different representation of architecture. So, um, so this vision for, for, for a new world were not uh, um, based only on a new idea of architecture, but also in, in the need to experiment with the new media to communicate it. So as Sandro says in these notes, it actually is a kind of just a verso, like in, it's a note in, in the back of, of, a, of a drawing, as like we need the, to, com to communicate this concept of architecture, we need uh, moving images, we need, me we need photo montage, we need, we need movie, and, 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 and imagination with, with kind of movie. So if we look at, at some of uh, um, Pauli work, actually previous, uh, the work he did uh, to join the uh, super studio, we already start to see a kind of a narrative structure uh, that uh, connects uh, images and text and, and writing somehow in, in his work. So this is his thesis, his master thesis in 69. And the project is, is a, um, a competition for a public park that is a monument to um, for the resistenza, that is the movement that fought uh, against fascists during World War II in the, in, and is located in the city of Modena. So the project is presented through a sequence of annotated scenes and the changing perspective correlated with the text. So it's all, each page is organized, as, as you see, every time in a kind of like uh, image and text, and the text can really read as a kind of voiceover on the image. And, and, and so somehow the, the way the drawing are done, even if are still a kind of architectural drawing, so it's still like a plan, a perspective, an elevation, we start to see has, how they are put it in sequence, as it's like they are building a kind of um, fiction somehow uh, around the project, like a narrative, and, and they are also shot as it will be like, is it like, like a camera will, will go and kind of like go from a kind of aerial view to a first perspective and then and then kind of zooming in into the, into, the, into the project more nearby to the point that we are very near here and then it's, it's also something happened that that's, uh, part of the building is used as a, really as a kind of movie theater in, in a kind of drive-in uh, idea. So the, 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 the project was a kind of simple park with a, with a kind of long lawn and, and a kind of building that was done with this kind of arc gets uh, illustrated to, uh, you know, with the, with the idea that uh, every time the kind of the drawing shift uh, and, the, and you as a, as, a, um, as a visitor somehow of the drawing through this um, sequence of images and scenes, you kind of start to kind of feel that you are actually going through the, 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 the building. So it's not yet a, a storyboard or it's not yet using a kind of like movie um, structure, but somehow we can say it's the first attempt to a kind of narrating architecture differently and build a, this kind of like um, discourso per immagini that is really kind of a series of images that are kind of like uh, following a structure one each other. 
in this other work that is called Brief Tale of Architecture that uh, Sandro did in 69, again, there is a kind of, uh, the, the idea was to present a new form of architecture uh, that reflected a kind of different idea of the territory and, and change of urban settlement and perception of also of ecology and, and possible of a kind of larger uh, form of architecture and so on. And so the, the, this, again, this uh, is a kind of series of, of collages that uh, Sandro did that um, always present this architecture of like non-architectural material. So we go from coffee beans to building in foam and, and, uh, and, and always is done introducing this kind of new form of architecture that somehow had to be different from the existing architecture in, in, um, in really cutting out this aerial view and introducing these this new, um, new ideas. And, and again, if you will see it in the show now, here the, show, the images are separate, but you can still imagine a kind of story among these, and then we, we, we leave from this kind of, we are always on a kind of uh, plane and looking at this architecture, but somehow it's kind of like uh, leaving uh, to the point that now we end up being in this kind of uh, world with a medusa on a plane. And um, I have asked uh, Sandro why suddenly there is a medusa on a plane. And, and somehow he, he told me like that was his way of, of introducing again a kind of disturbing element that you think you are really in a kind of new territory. You are a new kind of definition of, our, of architecture. So these are some of, of previous work. There are many more in the, in the archive that tell this, this, really this idea of forming a project of architecture through a sequence of, um, of drawings, a sequence of images that are always connected through a kind of um, uh, narrative or, 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 or structure. So Super Studio did three movies and and the two of them, uh, Sandro was uh, the editor or was very much involved. The first one is Architettura Interplanetaria in 1970 that is responding to that somehow that uh, uh, letter that I showed you before of like this need of like thinking architecture differently. And it was realized in 1771, mainly by, by Sandro with also uh, Torado di Francia and with the help of the uh, movie section of the University of Florence. And they also consulted the, a, um, an astrophysic uh, center, like to really kind of trying to understand how this idea of um, an architecture that will connect two planets can, can happen somehow. And this is like a 12 minutes movie. And then the second one is uh, Super Superficie that was presented, uh, was conceived and presented for the show that uh, Emilio Ambas curated in 1972 at MoMA and, uh, um, and together with, a, with, a, with an installation. And after was uh, uh, rethought as a first episode of uh, another work that uh, um, uh, Super Studio was working on that is Atti Fondamentali that uh, was a, a focus on, on architecture and human life. And so somehow uh, super superficie become the kind of first chapter of that, become a vita, life. And then they did in 73 a movie that was a ceremonia, ceremony, where Sandro was not involved. And then just lately, uh, in 2010, they actually have worked on the other two, education, uh, love, and, and, and that. So, but the, the, let's say the focus, like the, the films are, are known and you actually can see them um, in, in the galleries, but the focus of, of uh, uh, this exhibition is like how they arrived to conceptualize um, these movies, why they decided to movies and, and um, how we can find traces in the archive that explain how actually they were able even to technically do this movie in a kind of um, pre-digital world. So the first one, the interplanetary, as I said, is, is a movie that uh, trying to describe this idea of a new architecture that um, um, Sandro expressed in his, and that we can find notes about this, but it also expressed in the movie, in, in the script, is very clear that uh, the idea is to kind of find this new relation between the planet and the Earth in the moment that, the uh, moon and Earth in the moment that we discover the moon. 
and so the need of a kind of new scale of architecture. And somehow so the project was um, to build a highway that will connect the two uh, planets and somehow imagine what will mean this kind of life with this, this, in these new planets, but also around this, this um, highway. And, um, and the movie is, is done with a mix of um, newsreel, so the real uh, landing on the moon. So the first uh, part I've shown is actually a part of the movie that they just take it from the kind of uh, newsreel. And then collages that were done like this one to introduce this new um, architectural um, idea. So um, the, the, um, the many collages that we see are actually done, uh, as I said, in this kind of pre-digital world. So the photo montage were done like mixing existing um, magazine, assembling existing Im images, always working, you have to imagine that this was also done without actually even photocopying or serocopying, so the scale of, of, of the images were not even changed. So it was incredible how they were, Asandro was able to create these new images that were kind of assembling on this is existing thing. So the idea was like that a kind of new reality, a new image was actually done, very much mixing and reshuffling actually what was uh, the current uh, reality. So here we see like even taking from, from a magazine um, the current kind of like uh, images of, of the real uh, shots of landing on the moon and already introducing, again, for example, this is the drawing of, of his thesis, so he's already introducing uh, pieces of his own architecture and kind of like occupying, uh, occupying uh, the moon somehow. So in the archive, we have many of these documents that are actually fascinating to really see how he structured really the thinking of how he, you, will, you will build the movie. So the, the movie is really conceived in different scenes, in different moments. And, and so these drawings are, are a kind of um, um, telling uh, the, na the, 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 the narrative, the script, what the project is, at the same time already thinking of like how which is the images that they will have to build to actually um, um, make the, 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 the movie focusing on that and make it this understandable. So, so for example, uh, this uh, is really uh, also a collage that you, you have in the show. I'm not sure I have it here, but that is really like already constructing this idea of an encounter between um, Aldrin and, and two humans on, on the moon. So, we understand from this that also the, uh, how this photomontage that we have always seen as a kind of separate image are actually so integral uh, on the, uh, of, of, of the construction of the movie in itself. So then you have much more detailed drawing of really like uh, imagining really like the landing on the moon and how this kind of these two planets, they will kind of like attract each other and how this kind of highway will be built. And then obviously, uh, the script, and, and here you see uh, they were really serious about calculating all the kind of number and structure of like how actually this highway uh, should be built. Um, and, and, uh, uh, and so this was the script that actually in the movie has really the voiceover um, on, on the project. And then, and then we find also um, a very interesting document that are actually this is a very simple list of like where the images that was, were needed for the movie will have to be taken. So we know that uh, uh, things will come from, you know, Italian magazine like Domenica del Corriere that was a kind of typical uh, magazine that was attached to the main uh, newspaper. But the main uh, images, they come from, from this uh, magazine and uh, there was a kind of special issue related to kind of the landing on the moon and so many of the images that you see in the movie are actually directly taken from, from, from this magazine, reshot or reuse it to do the collage. The other things was obviously the sound, like the, the, this is also the other interesting part is that obviously in, in this work then they, they, they also had to think about um, being the movie or like what will be the soundscape. And, and, uh, and so somehow the the initial idea of, of Sandro is that he will use uh, John Cage 
uh, silence piece, like the 4 minute 33, but that was not possible because actually there is not a sound in that. I don't know if you know that performance, but uh, so, so he decided to actually use a um, other kind of sound that I will give you now to you. Let's see if I'm able to. So, um, this uh, you can then see in the movie, but the, so he picked a um, pygmy hunting core and a Buddhist chant of a funeral, and, and these are actually the only sounds that were present, and for him it was very important to understand of like, okay, we, if we go in this new territory, what, what will be the sound there? Like, so he was really thinking of like, how you can imagine this, New place and what what will be the what we will what we will hear and so uh, it's very nice also to analyze the movie from that point of view and also the the voiceover it seems like a machine who is speaking so again the, 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 there is this kind of thinking of like the presence of technology in this kind of like new uh, world that uh, um, we have somehow discovered. So um, the, the other things, these are some, uh, this was the collage I was speaking before of like the encounter uh, between these two uh, world, uh, terrestrial or extraterrestrial. And, and the other things was like, um, all this was, very, was done in a very basic way. So the, the only things they can use was the newsreel existing and their, and their collages. So, but how gets the idea that, that, that of this kind of this idea of movement. So another thing that, that uh, Sandra really question is like how I can give the idea that these things is moving. And so the colors and also the idea of like having this idea of like um, uh, changing of like giving the idea of the movement. So this, a lot of things that you see in the movie were actually done in, um, in a kind of uh, um, direct, uh, way where, where, where actually Sandra will draw and the camera will film, like he will draw a line, the camera will film, draw another line, camera will film, and then was done to release in the movie as a one continuous thing. So uh, it were also extremely timely consuming, actually making the idea of a movement without having the possibility to, to do it in the architectural drawing, if not with, with this semen, introducing a kind of cinematic um, system inside uh, the drawing. So um, the, the, the second movie was su super uh, superficie, and this is a fantastic um, drawing that at the end was collage. At the end was was uh, not not used, but that we have in our um, uh, our archive. And and um, again, there is this kind of presence of of the idea of the super superficie is that there will be a kind of one grid that will kind of homogenize the world and will be a kind of grid of energy that will go everywhere and, and people will be able to um, live without being constrained anymore by a house or by, by a kind of static way of living and it will just can stop and connect in one point of the grid. So these people probably found here a place, a horse is also with them. But um, so the idea is kind of a life without objects and, and, uh, and um, in a society where primary needs are actually consist of energy, information, and uh, um, and in the movie they say the only architecture will be life itself. So um, somehow the system was done in this way, so that that you know you had this kind of greed, and then there was a kind of um, plug where you, what you will have was like air, water, heat, um, video, audio. Uh, mm, uh, food, uh, light again, and memory. So somehow it's quite amazing that this was done in, in the 70s and somehow imagine it that it's kind of like greed that will cover all over the world and then you had this point that will feed you with all these kind of elements. Somehow already seeing actually the way, the way we live today. So the greed was, was this. So the main challenge in the movie was like 
how we can represent this, uh, this, this greed. And so somehow you have to imagine this was a kind of present but also invisible, um, invisible structure. And, and so this movie, uh, in respect to interplanetary, has the, the fact that it, uh, um, it has real scenes that are shot uh, in, the, in the countryside of, uh, of Florence, and uh, of Siena, sorry. And actually the, the first idea for them was to do, uh, to do in the, go into the quarry, uh, where actually all the stones that has been used to build Florence was taken, so this kind of abandoned void will be the beginning of, 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 of this uh, new life. And uh, then they decided to do this in the, um, in, in the uh, countryside of Siena. But so somehow the, all the problem was like how to film this, um, this countryside and how to then uh, introduce this, um, this, uh, this greed that had to be introduced uh, in a kind of like um, second moment. So as I said, actually this drawing it's just a final drawing, but uh, basically what, what Sandra has done is like he will do a line and that was filming and then another line and another line and so on. And then you will see in the movie, these things comes in as a kind of fluid uh, um, thing, but was built uh, um, with all this effort. So this is, for example, a kind of testing. Uh, so these are photo by Cristiano Toraldo di Francia. This is Sandro who is experimenting himself, like finding one of these plugs in the territory, and this was actually how this kind of plug uh, will work. Um, we have also all this kind of material that's very interesting, like here, for example, Montreal is here. So in fact, in the movie, you will see there is a scene of also, also where the Fuller um, dome is there. So this is actually a list, a very precise list of all the sequence and all the images between their collages and other architecture they wanted to introduce in the movie. So it's very precise, like, so we know kind of all the sources, what they looked at, and, and somehow which was also the idea of, of architecture they wanted to, to bring in. So here you start to have a real storyboard, like here is really like this part that is like the, the scene that they are um, filming in Siena, how, how they will go about and, and how they will, um, uh, organize and structure the movie and, and so at the same time is organizing the discourse like the idea of architecture and organizing which is the kind of representation that they have to have for each of these elements so here we start to see like the, the problem of like how, how this greed behave and, and, and how that then, then has to be uh, filmed as I said um, very detailed question of like in the mom, in the movie you will see this comes out so how this section uh, of of the land uh, will uh, have to to be done and so on and and then other pages are even more directing uh, somehow so somehow the the architect become really a, a movie director so here is really the part where like the two people you will see in the movie they encounter the plug and then. The woman take this this shell and is like in a kind of um, amazed about what what she hears. So somehow this is really a kind of storyboard that direct each moment and direct until the moment you have this kind of uh, beautiful moment where poetic moment where they leave. So it's all time they are they are questioning themselves of like which is the idea of this new world. Uh, so these are all famous collages that are. Um, all known because of, 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 of like this one is really about a kind of technology. This is again is, is a beautiful collage where you have like horses in a, in, in a, in a prairie and there is a kind of uh, space um, UFO coming in. But this one is also amazing and this we have in our collection and this, this woman figure uh, somehow is kind of like uh, centering or I was uh, continuously asking uh, Sandro if it's like it's this kind of energy is coming out of her or is entering her, but somehow all the all the the movie questioned this idea of like how we represent this new world and and um, how we, we we communicate this kind of new idea of architecture, new idea of life that that we have in mind. So the 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 movie has done um again with with a lot of things that we find in the archive to explain also detail of again th that were not possible to film 
Uh, so, so the only way of having a kind of fading image was that actually to do several drawings that actually are continuously changing from, from black to gray and having these people kind of uh, like uh, fading, fading out. So um, for me, it's been a, a kind of fascinating um, uh, research in the archive to really understand like First of all, how they, they, they had to invent a kind of new way of communicating uh, architecture, but also how they changed it, they were, the way of drawing and the way of representing, introducing this idea of, of a new media like movie and, 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 and imagining the, uh, the narrative and the design and the, and the movie has, as, uh, as really one thing, as a kind of new tool for design and conceive architecture. So somehow, as, as Francesco said, is like this, this show is for us important today because I think if we think that all this was done in a kind of pre-digital world and uh, thinking of like all the tools we have now and somehow what would they were able to imagine uh, without having the tool of then realizing it is striking to see of like what we can achieve now with a kind of digital tool, but maybe we don't have the same aim for, for new scenarios or, or kind of new architecture. So um, I, I hope this is a, introduce you a little bit on the kind of general idea and I, then I leave you to discover the, the show and to discover all the, the movies and the, all the, the original material in the, in, in the exhibition. I really would like to thank Sandro for, for, uh, for being here, for uh, also personally for all the conversation we had in, in, uh, in these years, but also for um, having donated the archive at the CCA that uh, uh, has made possible this, but also will make possible future research on, on this material that is fascinating. And this is just a big, a small glimpse of, of his archive. So, um, and I also would like to thank all the people who work on this project that also helped me and kind of uh, witty ideas and all the people who work on bringing the archive here and process it. And uh, now the archive is all online and is also digitized. So it is uh, available for everybody in uh, any part of the world. So, and, um, and I also would like to thank the Ville de Montréal, the Ministère de la Culture et Communication, Canada Council of Art, and Conseil des Arts de Montréal that made, again, this uh, project possible. So, for no further review, I invite you to go to the show, and uh, you don't hesitate to ask Sandro uh, or myself to help you with, with Sandro if you have any questions, and there is also a drink in the bookstore. Thanks a lot. <laughs>